Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me, I've got Sky Sports' very own, Mr. Matthew Macklin. Matt, how are we doing? I'm good, mate. All good yourself? It's been, a, it's been a while. Normally it's every week. It's been about a good 10 days, I think. <laughs> I've left you alone. <laughs> I left you alone. Um, Matt, this is a very quick one. Uh, start off with some good news that came out this week from the government allowing a certain number of fans um, back into outdoor and indoor stadiums. Um, I, I believe Frank Warren came out first and said we'll have some fans for the Anthony Yard fight, but potentially the Anthony Joshua and Pude fight will have about a thousand people there. Yeah. I mean, it, that, it's fantastic news. You know, it, it really is. Even, even if it is only a thousand, even if it's only 500, you know, just to have anyone there to have some kind of a crowd, some kind of atmosphere, I mean, these are big fights that are happening and for there to be no crowd there, no atmosphere, when you're a big time fighter that's used to boxing and feeding off that energy, I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do and, they, and we've seen some great fights. So the, the lads are obviously getting their head into the right headspace where it needs to be. But um, look, you can't beat that live crowd. You just can't beat it. So that is uh, very, very welcomed news indeed. No, absolutely. And also, there was criticism on the government as well about them announcing funding towards sports uh, and boxing was unfortunately left out. But when I went through the list and I started looking at horse riding and some of these sports where, um, you know, there's question marks about these particular sports and, and how much the money they are receiving, were you a bit gutted that one boxing was le uh, left out? Um, I, I mean... <laughs> It's just unbelievable in the sense that you could not make that shit up. You've got horse riding. And what was the other one near the top? Rugby. You know, two, let's say, upper-class sports, especially horse riding. You know, the, basically, if you're involved with sports riding, mm -hmm. you, horse riding, sorry, sports riding, horse riding, chances are you're from money. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a wealthy sport that people that are wealthy get into, you know. You know, even rugby is is uh, it generally people well-to-do people go into rugby. Not all, but you know, I'm saying the majority. But you know, what about boxing? What about what about what about the you know talk about working class sport? Boxing's the bottom of the working class sport. You know, it's from the underprivileged uh, backgrounds. That's that that's generally where boxing comes from. People that you know, you see a lot of people that in boxing who who come from Homes where really they ain't getting much support in life. I'm not again. I'm not saying everyone, but there's a lot in, in the boxing gyms that really they don't have too much else in their life, in terms of purpose, structure, um, people to look up to, sense of purpose. You know, it's it's forget about people that go on and become world champions. I'm talking about just amateur boxing that give kids that are from maybe abusive backgrounds or single parent backgrounds or, you know, like I said, underprivileged or, or whatever. But, you know, that boxing gym, being a part of belonging to, having uh, role models to look up to, having a sense of belonging and purpose. You, you know, it's, it, it's unbelievable what, box, what amateur boxing does for people it, that, that haven't got any other options in life that maybe, you know, that, you know, we don't all come not every person in life starts from the same start position. You know, there was a there was a video on YouTube years ago or a while back, and it said, you know, if if you finish school, take five steps forward. You know, if you are from such and such a band, take another five. You know, and it just shows you, you know, some people have got it tough. Some people really have got it hard in life. I, I, I did, and I'm not saying I did, but some people have had it hard. You know, they ain't got too many options open to them. You know, it's a it's a lot easier for them to go wrong than it is for them to go right. And, you know, but amateur boxing clubs, you know, talk about um, social workers and, 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 and carers. That nearly every amateur boxing coach is that just by automatically, is all of those things, as well as being a boxing coach, he's, he ticks every other box, you know, the, the community, you know, the, and like you say, 
the, the parts of the community that are in most need of that care, of that direction, of that sense of purpose, sense of you know, a bit of structure and something to look up to, something to keep them on the straight and narrow. You know, that's and yet you got you got horse riding, which is like a multi, multi millionaire person sport. I'm not saying everyone, I'm generalizing, but I'm saying the majority of people because these they're not cheap sports, you know, they're not cheap. You know, in boxing, you don't need anything. You just go down the gym. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, but at the same time, when I say you don't need, it still costs money. You know, gyms still need something. I'm not saying you don't need a lot, but you still need something. I mean, because they don't need a lot. They haven't got anything anyway. These average gyms, you know, it relies on, you know, ex-fighters that maybe have done well throwing a few quid or a few businessmen that maybe boxed as an amateur. Didn't really win after that, but it was a big part of their life. It helped them. And they sponsor maybe equipment or things, you know, it's, but really you think of what it does for societies of the communities in the lower echelon, you know, in the, in the, in the, on the privileged place, uh, areas of cities. And then it gets nothing from the government, but, but horse riding and rugby with people, they've got loads of dough anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? These people have got money anyway, and they're getting the, the, the bulk of it. Like what is going on? Who, who came up with that? It's unbelievable. It, it's actually irritating talking about it. I thought we were going to be talking about <laughs> the war and joy. I didn't. I wasn't ready for this. But now that you're talking about it. As I'm talking, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. What the, what the fuck, man? Who, how, who who made that decision? Who who advised the person who made that decision? It's unbelievable. You could make it up. Well, let's just hope. I know Eddie Hearn's written a letter to uh, the MPs. I'm not sure if it's whether it's a sports minister or, or what sort uh, level that particular individual is, but let's just hope they can reverse the decision and, and, and give some funding, especially to grassroots. And as you just said, uh, a lot of the professionals are, are getting out there. They are fighting. They have promoters. They have managers. But the grassroots amateurs is, is absolutely nothing at the moment for them. Well, do you know what I think it is? And you know, again, I'm, again I'm, I am generalising because you don't have to, but I just think some some of these politicians, and let's face it, some of them are from the Eton background, which is talk about elitist and privileged. I just think they're so far retracted from reality of life. They've got such a, you know, a sense of entitlement. I, I, I don't think they look outside of their own little bubbles. You know, go to any city, any inner city, in Britain, you know, boxing gyms, you know, and not, you know, football clubs, of course, loads of sports, but boxing gyms, let's say, you know, are the ones where, you know, where, where, where these, in the roughest areas, in the most deprived areas, like I said, the most underprivileged people that don't have many options open to them, you know, boxing gyms gives them something to belong to, to be a part of, gives them direction, it gives them something to look up to role models that might steer them on the right track. Like I say, these people, it's probably a lot easier for them to go wrong than it is to go right. You know, and having a little bit of a nudge or steer, you know, teenage, adolescence, you know, can be a difference in, can be a massive difference in that person's right between ending up in jail or, you know, just, he might not go on and box professionally, or it might just steer him, give him a bit of a steer at that point in his life when he needed it. Like, how, who, who, who decides to give money to horse riding? And, and, and you know, you know, do you know what I mean? And you've got sports like boxing getting nothing. It's, it's, it, it's flabbergasting. <laughs> it leaves, I would say it leaves you speechless, but obviously it doesn't. Because, you, you know, it, but it also invokes, you know, anger in you a little bit. You know, it's annoying. You know, it's because it's, 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 it's wrong. That's what it is. It's wrong. Let's talk about a little boxing, a little bit about boxing. Um, two heavyweight fights on Saturday night. Matt, which one are you going to be watching and looking forward to the most? Can you guess which two they are? Well, obviously, Dubois and um, Joyce. And to be honest with you, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, I, I won't even watch that, you know. It's, listen, I'm not, it's one of them things. If they, if they both make a few quid out of it, listen, happy days. Fair play, lads. I'm delighted for that if that if they can. But you know, in terms of being excited or interesting as a boxing fan, nah, they listen, and I was a massive fan of both. You know, Mike Tyson, 
you know, when I was, he was, that was when I was getting into boxing. That's when I started to get into boxing. My first memories, my dad watching up to watch Mike Tyson with my dad. Um, Roy Jones, unbelievable. Uh, you know, when he would, listen, maybe, maybe at his absolute best, maybe up there with Sugar Ray Robinson. Do you know what I mean? It's just unbelievable. But they've had their, they've had their time. It's done, you know what I mean? If it's but listen, if it's an exhibition and they make a few quid, best of luck to them. I read somewhere, I think Mike Tyson close to around ten million, uh, Roy Jones as well, a few million as well. But there was a few doubters. I'm happy for, I'm happy for them for that. But you know, if you're gonna ask me as a pundit or a fan, I don't nah, bro. but the Bois Joyce, very, very excited um for this fight, definitely. Because it's another, it's one of those fights where people say, who you're picking? And the reality is, I don't know. And then people go, come on, you've got to pick one. Okay, well then, if you're pushing me, I'll lean to Dubois. But I don't know. I, I, don't, I, wouldn't, put, I wouldn't put any money on it, put it that way. <laughs> if it, you know, if it did, it wouldn't be a lot. <laughs> um, obviously, we know Joe Joyce had a great amateur career, um, but notably quite fresh still in the professional ranks, even though he's only had a few 10, 11 odd fights. Is the fight too soon for Dubois, who didn't have as an extensive amateur background as Joyce, and as well as a professional uh, kind of ranks at the moment as well? Look, do you know what I think we've seen this year? I think we've seen guys take fights that normally they wouldn't have taken, and normally their promoter or manager probably wouldn't have put them into. Um, you know, look, the thing with Joyce is he ain't no spring chicken. You know, he had a, he did have a long, extensive amateur career. All right, he's not that experienced. He's not, you know, he hasn't had many as a pro, but he's mature. He's a premature man. He's not, you know. So I, I think you've just got to crack on with him. Dubois could have swerved it, but I also think he's probably ready now for a fight like this. Do you know what I mean? And in the year that we're, the year that we've had, you know, it, it's a big fight. Everyone's talking about it, and you know, it's it's obviously. When you're manoeuvring someone from where he is to get up to the next level, you have to take a risk. It's a calculated risk because, you know, it's an educated gamble because it's, you, you back your man, you've seen him, you've seen the improvements, and you believe in him. So they're rolling the dice, but ultimately, I feel like they're really confident in Dubois and also Joyce, his team are confident in him. And, you know, someone's going to be right, someone's going to have got it wrong, but Really, does anyone really lose? I mean, if it's a great fight, it's not the end of the world. If, if the wire loses, he's young and he'll come again. And, 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 and if Joyce loses, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's not as good as he thought or maybe, maybe it's a great fight and he's, he, he proves himself anyway. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you, you, you both go, the guy who loses in a great fight, his stock can still go up. Do you know what I'm saying? Listen, I lost early on in my career to, uh, a couple of times I lost to Jamie Moore when I was 24 years old. You know, but probably today, that's probably the fight people talk about. And, you know, in many ways, maybe it was the making of me. Do you know what I mean? Like, John Doherty lost the other week against Jack Cullen. Now, it was a loss. But you know what? I think he'll learn so much from that fight. And I think, I think that, that fight might end up being the making of him. Because he was getting, away, he was blasting guys out of there. Wasn't really pacing himself during these fights. All of a sudden, he stepped in here with ten round against a tough guy, has, has him down early, and you know, expended, wasted a lot of energy, and realised, you know what, you can't just blast everyone out. Picks his chin up a bit. It, all of a sudden, he's going to go back to the drawing board with a fine tooth comb. He's going to look at every single little mistake he's made, and he'll analyse it. He'll super analyse it, and he'll go back in the gym because you know why? Because the, right now. He's in pain at that loss. And pain makes you look at ourselves and makes us make the adjustment. You don't want to feed it again. When you win, but you should have done this, you should have done that. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? You brush it off a little bit because you're too busy celebrating. And you're looking at all the things you did right. When you're lost, you just look at all the things you did wrong. And that's when you, that's when you make those adjustments then. And that's you improve the most. So, listen, it's, 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 um, it's a great fight. It's a great fight. Whoever wins goes on. And whoever loses, depending on how that is, etc., it might not be the end of the world at all. You, you, you know, like I say, John Doherty, he lost the fight. But 
do you know what? Could be the making of him. Announced today, uh, we, we've heard that Ismail Salas, the trainer of Joe Joyce, tested positive for uh, COVID-19 and will no longer be part of the team. Is that a, a disadvantage to Joe now? Well, look, it's, it's frustrating. It's not we haven't planned it, has it? It's been something that's suddenly come up and now it's, you know, kicking the balls, I suppose. But he's, um, look, he hasn't been training with him anyway, has he? So it's not like he's been in him, every, it's not it's like he's been with him every single day for the last four weeks, eating, sleeping, breathing, going over the game plan, drumming the things in. You know, that hasn't really been their relationship, not for this fight anyway. So, look, he's an experienced guy, isn't he? He's been around the world, trout boxing. I know amateur different, but still, He's probably had lots of different people corner him. You know what I mean? It's he, he, He'll be all right. I don't think it'll be a major deal. Matt, we don't know what's going to happen with anti-Joshua and Tyson Fury if that happens next. We don't know if the WBO is going to call on the mandatory for Joshua Usyk. We don't know if Joshua's going to vacate the WBO belt. But a potential scenario that can happen is the winner of this could potentially face Usyk next for that WBO belt if anti-Joshua has to vacate. Is the winner of this fight ready for someone like Alexander Usyk? When, when are you ready? <laughs> when are you ever ready? You know, until you make the jump, you, you know what I mean? Look, uh, it's about opportunity sometimes as well, you know. And, and taking the opportunity. Sometimes, you know, there's no perfect... Well, there might be a perfect, but rarely is it ever perfect. But, you know, when the opportunity comes up, do you not keep that? Like, whoever wins, certainly, let's say Joyce wins. What, how, why would he knock that back? You know, he must, did he even box Usyk in the amateurs? I, I wouldn't be shocked if he did. They probably did. Or, or, or they definitely would have come across each other. So, look, for he, uh, if you're Joyce, because of his age and because of the experience having the amateur, he'd definitely jump into that. Don't forget, Usyk hasn't had a million pro fights. You know what I mean? But... And the Bois, you know, I, I, I think Frank and the people with the Bois, I think they'd, put, I think they'd take that fight. Like, cause, cause, listen, the risk, it's always about risk and reward. You know what I mean? Now, is Usyk a big risk? Of course he is. He's, he's one of the top fighters in the world in any weight division. Um, but the reward is massive. For reward, he's your heavyweight champion of the world. So, yeah, you, I, I, think you'd be, I think the winner of this would be mad not to take that fight. So I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put pressure on you. Who wins on Saturday night? Like I say, I, 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 the reason why I'm so uh, looking forward to it is because I don't know who's going to win. I don't even know who I think is going to win. You know what I mean? It's, um, I keep changing my mind. I can see how both can win it. Um, look, if someone put a gun to my head and said, you have to pick one, I'd probably go with Dubois. But, no, I, like I say... <laughs> If we we're in the bookies, I wouldn't be putting a lot on it, you know, because I'm not, I'm not overly confident. I just, I, it's a close one. It's hard to call. Um, like I say, I, I could, I'd leave, I could make a strong argument to why I think Joyce is going to win. You know what I mean? But I just got a feeling that I think, I just think Dubois, yeah. Okay, Matthew Mackin, always a pleasure, my man. Thank you so much for jumping on this evening or this late afternoon, and I'm sure I'll be pestering you again in due course. No problem. Matthew Macklin, IFL TV, thank you very much. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt.